Good morning on the 25th of December. This is a 28storms.com cyclone update for the northern Indian Ocean, Bay of Bengal, Sri Lanka, and southern India. There is the chance that we will be dealing with a tropical cyclone over the next three to five days. And for interest in Australia, please go ahead and check out our other videos for information regarding Tropical Cyclone Grant. So here we are looking to the east of Sri Lanka, and we have this developing tropical low. As of the latest update from the U.S. Joint Typhoon Warning Center, they are giving the system a medium chance of development into a tropical cyclone within the next 24 hours. Meanwhile, the India Meteorological Department is also noting the heavy convection over the Bay of Bengal, but as of this time, they are not mentioning the possibility of a cyclone. Elsewhere, the Sri Lanka Department of Meteorology appears to be handling this tropical disturbance better than the last tropical cyclone that impacted the nation. They are advising all residents to pay close attention to upcoming media releases from the Department of Meteorology as they are anticipating strong winds and heavy rain. Now as we switch to the enhanced infrared animation for much of the Indian Ocean, it is very apparent that the monsoon trough is extremely active and it extends from Indonesia northwestward into the Bay of Bengal in the general direction of southern India and the greatest concentration of convection is associated with the tropical disturbance just to the east of Sri Lanka and as we turn to the water vapor animation it looks as though conditions are marginally favorable but some of that thunderstorm activity is getting sheared toward the north as a result of some southerly shear that we will take a look at in just a moment but first this is a more zoomed in infrared look at the developing low here is Sri Lanka and this is the coast of southern India convection is still somewhat disorganized and it's not very intense but this feature still has at least an additional 48 to 72 hours to develop into a marginal, weak tropical cyclone before making landfall. Furthermore, despite the rather ragged appearance of the system on the latest infrared, as we turn to the precipitable water animation, we can see toward the tail end, the cyclonic vorticity just east of Sri Lanka is definitely on the increase. More evidence of further development stems from the latest low-level vorticity analysis where we do notice that the vorticity max is strengthening east-southeast of Sri Lanka and the latest shear chart does confirm the southerly wind shear and that is why we're not seeing rapid development and this is a somewhat messy pattern and it looks as though light to moderate wind shear will remain in place but conditions should be just marginally favorable enough for this system to attain cyclone status before moving inland. Cooler sea surface temperatures would also be an inhibiting factor if the system were moving more toward the north in the general direction of Bangladesh where water temperatures are below the 26 degrees Celsius threshold for tropical cyclone development, but the water temperatures are generally between 26 and 28 degrees Celsius just off the Indian coastline, so this is still more than favorable enough for some steady organization. So what is going to be responsible for steering this storm toward the west-northwest? Well, as we take a look at the latest GFS forecast for the mid to upper levels, we will soon notice that the jet stream is going to remain well to the north over the Middle East and Western Asia, and we do have some mid-level ridging that is going to be draped across central and northern India, and that will allow our system to remain on a general westerly track, and it could very well pass just to the north of Sri Lanka, but we still cannot rule out a direct landfall or at least some heavy rainfall associated with the center as it passes just toward the north and it looks as though the system will be making a landfall along the southern Indian coastline and then abruptly weakening thereafter as it runs away from its energy source that being the water. So here is a look at the actual cyclone forecast from the GFS model and we are still seeing steady development of this tropical low as we work our way into the next 24 to 48 hours and it appears that the storm will reach a maximum intensity within three to four days and this particular run has a center passing just north of Sri Lanka but again that does not completely rule out this country from receiving some heavy rainfall and some gusty wind conditions and then as we advance into the day four period the system is making landfall along southern India where they will also be facing the risk of some heavy precipitation. This map shows the accumulated precipitation forecast from the GFS model over the next seven days. So based on the track that we just saw, this is what the model is forecasting in terms of the heavy rainfall. And it looks as though the highest precipitation will remain just offshore from Sri Lanka. But again, we can't rule out some of these higher precipitation totals, especially along the northern end of the island. And all of this is going to work its way into southern India. 
As of right now, we are seeing a very strong model consensus and all of the models are in good agreement with regard to this type of forecast track. This is now the ECMWF model run and as we go into day one, two, and three, we do see steady intensification of the cyclone and then as we go into day four and day five, the storm makes landfall just north of Sri Lanka across southern India and then quickly dissipates over land. So just to summarize, all interests in Sri Lanka should keep up with the latest weather reports from your government. As of right now, it looks as though the cyclone will develop within the next two to three days and eventually begin to pass just toward the north, but gusty winds and heavy rainfall are still possible, especially across the northern half of the nation. And then all interests in southern India are also advised to keep up with the weather reports and even interests here in Chennai should be keeping up with this developing cyclone as there is a chance that you will also receive some gusty winds and heavy rainfall. And wherever this center does make a landfall, the risk of flooding could be apparent as that will be the location where the heaviest precipitation does occur. So thank you for viewing this 28storms.com cyclone video update. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel not only for more updates pertaining to this system, but also the developing tropical cyclone off the coast of Australia.